released in 1986 and man what an ugly ass title screen. This is Gauntlet 2, which is essentially an expanded well, version of the original well, well, Gauntlet, but more ugly. Like in the original game, there are four character classes to play as, with the choices being Warrior, Valkyrie, Wizard oh. and Elf. The main difference from the original game is that multiple players can now choose to play as the same character class. New voice samples were also added identifying each player by their colour and class. New level designs that seem quite poor in some cases were added, including the possibility of encountering them in alternate ways by having the playfield turned in steps of 90 degrees. Other new features include the enemy IT, which upon contact made the player IT and drew all the enemies towards them. The only way to release this curse is by touching another player or entering the exit, turning any level containing IT into a fantasy filled game of tag. Other noticeable additions include the ability to ricochet shots off walls by the means of a special pickup, acid puddles and a large dragon which occupies multiple squares and requires multiple hits to destroy. Most of these new features actually came from the general Ow. public. Atari being Atari basically tasked the fans of the original game to come up with ideas for the sequel. Ones that they liked were added to the game. I'm sure Gauntlet 2 has its fans, but to me, it seems like a half-soft follow-up, which lacks the class and refinement of the original. Yow. Ow. Ooh. Uh. Ouch. Uh. Uh. This is the Atari ST port, one of only three original non-emulator ports to feature the four player option of the arcade. This was possible via a supported adapter that allowed two further joysticks, totaling four, to be connected via the machine's parallel port. The actual port of the game is really good for the system. Sure, it is missing a lot of enemies on screen at the same time, and some speech, but what is here works well. I just wish a bit more effort could have been put into the sound effects. Sometimes they don't play or just sound awful. Taking an exit for example just results in a pathetic beep sound. Again, just like the Atari ST version, this Amiga port allows up to 4 players with the use of an adapter. It is also a very competent port. In many ways, it is just the same as the ST version, but what does stand out is the difference in sound. Now we have better speech samples, although a lot is still missing, better sound effects and better music. Well, what there is of it. MS-DOS also got a port of what seems to be the Amiga version, but unlike that or the ST game, this one plays full screen. But where is the audio? I mean, we got an ear-wrenching rendition of the title music, but no in-game audio at all? This can't be right, can it?
Jamshot CPC port shown here was developed by Gremlin Graphics. The startup screen promises that the game has all of what the arcade offers and more. Well, that's a lie. There is no speech for a start, but what we do have is quite good for an Amstrad CPC. Colorful graphics, good speed and responsive controls for movement. It is a shame that sometimes the character does tend to stop shooting at times, and some of the graphics are a little basic, but still, for a CPC, this is not bad at all. Next up is the ZX Spectrum port. Now while this looks rather basic and lacks any speech, it does play reasonably well. Just as well as the Amstrad version, but just a little faster. There's not much more to say really. Well, besides the movable blocks are no longer movable for some reason. Oh boy, the Commodore 64 port looks like it's going to have some potential from the higher resolution character select screen, but then the game starts. What we get is a very slow paced and rather ugly looking game. There are some things in this port that I couldn't even understand what they were meant to be, especially the food. Playability is also an issue. Not only is it slow, like I've already mentioned, but it also has some crappy collision detection. Shots onto enemies, don't always register and sometimes completely stop. Easily the worst playing version so far. The next version of Gauntlet was developed by Tengen and one of the earliest games for the console that supported up to 4 players, being compatible with either the NES 4-score or the NES satellite adapter. Thankfully unlike the NES version of the first Gauntlet, Gauntlet 2 was more of a direct conversion of the arcade original, lacking any sort of storyline or ending. The port is rather good though. We have some good sampled speech which is just as good as the arcade original and playability that also rivals it. What is odd is that there is no default rapid fire in this version, unlike the others. And finally let's take a look at the original Game Boy release. Based upon the NES version we get everything that had including speech samples. We also get a load of additional slowdown, but it doesn't affect the enjoyment of the game that much. I do find the game rather boring though. Maybe that is because of a lack of atmosphere or the fact that rapid fire is also missing, making the game seem even more of a chore. Whatever may be the issue, I can't see myself ever completing this one. Welcome to the Bouncy Guy. 
And let's take a look at all those versions of Gauntlet 2 running side by side.